in vitro fertilization is a groundbreaking procedure that allows us to use state-of-the-art reproductive technology to produce genetically valuable offspring for males and females who might not have had a chance to reproduce otherwise. It allows us to take males and females from physically different locations, maybe males and females who aren't socially compatible, or even take frozen sperm from a male who has passed away and create genetically valuable embryos that will contribute to the diversity of the population in human care. The project was a collaboration with Smithsonian Institute because they have the expertise there to do this procedure. The scientists there have done this procedure previously but has not been successful. Our contribution is the cheetahs in our collection. They're very tractable animals, they're very habituated to close human contact, and that allowed us to be able to administer medication and hormones to synchronize them, to be able to monitor them closely, to be able to x-ray and ultrasound these animals with behavioral modification, not requiring anesthesia to allow us to follow the procedure very closely. In vitro fertilization is a surgical procedure, so it was done in our surgery suite with the animals under anesthesia. Eggs were collected from two of our females, Khabibi and Bella. Semen was collected from a male at Smithsonian Institute and another male at Fossil Rim. After the eggs were fertilized, the embryos were transferred into Isabel and Ophelia. And at that point, it's a waiting game. We have to wait till the pregnancies progress far enough that we can detect them. So at 30 days, both females were ultrasounded using behavioral conditioning. They would lie down and allow us to ultrasound them awake. At that point, we confirmed that Isabella had two early fetuses, but none were detected in Ophelia. At 30 days, we're one third of the way through pregnancy, so it's possible that those early pregnancies could be lost. So we wanted to repeat the ultrasound at 45 days and then follow up with x-rays at 60. So at 45 days, we ultrasounded Isabella again and saw maturing, developing fetuses, again, two animals that we had seen before. The final confirmation was at 60 days. At this point, we x-rayed Isabel and were able to detect two growing fetuses with mineralized skeletons confirming that she was pregnant. Cheetah births in human care are relatively rare, and this is an important tool to allow us to expand the population and maintain a genetic diversity. Our cheetahs are great animals for this program because they're so well trained. We have an amazing staff that works with these animals day in, day out, and they are trained so solidly for all their medical behaviors. You know, a lot of animals in the zoos, we're starting to work on giving them more choice, making sure that these animals get to have a say in if their blood gets taken or not, get an injection or not. So these guys are so used to working not only with our staff, but other staff too. These people from Smithsonian could come right in and fit right in because these cheetahs are used to change being normal. When we do these training sessions, um, it can be once a day, it can be twice a day. We really try to vary it from day to day what we're doing just so we keep our cats thinking and on their toes. Um, and so when we do these training sessions, we do work one-on-one -on -one with Izzy. We will interact with her in a free contact manner. And we're able to do that because we hand raised her. So she's really comfortable with us coming in there and doing different tactile things with her and doing those training sessions as well. During the initial IVF pro process, the, our training came in super handy because we actually had to do hormone injections before we even started the procedure. So making sure that injection behavior was as solid as it can be was really important to us. And then for the actual procedure itself, we were able to anesthetize her with her trained injection behavior, which meant that she wasn't stressed out at all and was a kind of completely cool, calm, collected kitty during it. All of the training that was essential to the IVF procedure um, was stuff that we actually already had trained. We didn't have to teach them to do really anything new for this process and making us another great candidate for it. The only training that we had to teach the cheetahs to do was the ultrasound behavior. So we took their blood draw behavior and we were actually able to alter that just a little bit and train them to do the ultrasound that we needed to do for the vets. These cubs are so important because this has never happened. Um, they've tried in vitro fertilization two other times and they were not successful, the Smithsonian, and this time they were. And it's huge for us because it was the first time we've ever tried in vitro fertilization. Uh, we've tried artificial insemination and we haven't been successful with artificial insemination in cheetahs in 15 years. So it, we had to make a switch. And working with the Smithsonian, that's why we decided let's try in vitro fertilization. And the, I think the coolest part of it is, Izzy is not a genetically valuable cat at all, yet she, in my opinion, is the most valuable cheetah in the world um, because she successfully carried two cubs um, to term. 
The babies, the actual eggs came from BB, who's a very valuable cheetah genetically, but she's six years old. She's never been bred, and chances of her carrying a litter at that age are pretty slim. So these cubs are um, valuable to the collection here um, in other zoos, but more importantly to me, this is the science that could save that species in the wild. There are a lot of factors that are causing cheetahs to be in so much trouble in Africa. One of the main is there's 7,500 of them left. Uh, they have a 95% infant mortality rate, 95% of them. The cubs born this year will not reach one year of age. They are being uh, captured, the cubs are being captured and they're being sent out of Somalia into the Middle East. Those cubs will not survive. Many of them don't even make it. Um, they're fragmented, so they, uh, the genetic diversity is getting watered down. So th this cat's in big trouble, and if we don't get involved and start helping the cheetah in any way that we can, there's a very good chance that this animal is going to go extinct in our lifetime. Zoos all over the world work together. The thing that I love about the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium is we collaborate with so many different organizations. In order to solve our conservation challenges, we need the research and we need the collaboration to work together. We're so excited to announce this great success story and having cheetah cubs in our care. But what I love is the fact that it's the bigger picture that matters. We're talking about population sustainability and helping animals that are highly endangered out in the wild. So just imagine, animals in our care can actually save the animals out in the wild. For many years, the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium have really worked hard on cheetah conservation. We've been supporting so many different programs throughout Africa helping cheetahs. But when we talk about this edition, it's a great collaboration, it's a great story of success with science, and it's all due to the passion of our staff and their great work. To me personally, this is, gives me goosebumps. I feel it right now, it really does. I think it is the culmination of a lot of work, a lot of people working together, learning how to train animals, animals learning how to work with people, how these cheetahs are working with the staff and their relationship, the investment on both ways, the investment of staff, their passion just shines through how much they care about these animals. And to think about that, using animal training, just a science of behavior change, to get animals to work with us and participate and do things together with us and think it's a great idea and it increases the welfare of the animal, that gets me excited. That gets me excited about doing what we do at the Columbus Zoo. This is a huge accomplishment. I've been working for the Columbus Zoo for 40 years and it's probably the greatest accomplishment I've ever been part of. This is not something we could have done without the Smithsonian. They are so active in cheetah root protection and um, the science of cheetahs, which is so important in order for us to move forward, where the Columbus Zoo is very active in training, and so our animals were the perfect specimens to perform this science on. These types of collaborations um, with from zoo to zoo, it's the most important thing that we do. And a lot of people don't realize that because we would never be able to do any of this by ourselves. And so zoos collaborate with zoos all over the country. And we're always finding ways and, and seeking out ways of how can we um, increase the chances of this animal's survival in the wild. And this was a perfect example of that.